morning everyone welcome to sunday morning service how has your week been so far are you excited to receive the word of god i'm really excited if you've been really being blessed by the ministry i really encourage you to share it with your friends and your family amen today we are going to be looking at the subject of prayer of jesus prayer of jesus you might be wondering what is that you may have even heard prayer of jabez but today we are looking at prayer of jesus amen allow me to say what a prayer and we'll get started father i thank you thank you for your incredible sons and daughters you know what they're going through right now the challenges the stress the anxiety hopelessness depression holy spirit as we look at the subject of prayer of jesus give us your hope i ask this in your precious name of jesus christ amen so you guys you guys all know peter so the text for us for today is actually from luke luke you turn with me to luke chapter 22 verses 31 to 34 Luke chapter 22 verses 31 to 34. Amen. And it says this is record says Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. If you read verse 31 it says and the Lord said Simon Simon indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith should not fail that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren strengthen your brother and but i have prayed for you that your faith should not fail when you have returned to me strengthen your brother and today we are looking at prayer of jesus did you know that jesus has prayed for you what an encouraging thought what an encouraging truth that jesus has prayed for you. We're going to be looking at few things from this subject, few things that we can extract from Luke. The f- few things are number 1 your enemy. Number 1 your enemy. Secondly, your preparation. Your preparation. Thirdly, your turn to God. Your turn to God. Your enemy If you think about this story, this is a real story where Jesus is talking to Peter and he says the Lord said to Simon Simon indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you. In the middle of your crisis there's an enemy out there that wants you down. There's an enemy out there that is going against your God-given purposes and plans for your life. There's an enemy out there that is trying to put you with so much depression, so much anxiety, so much stress. There's an enemy that is for your life that the purpose of that enemy is to take you down. Does not want you to be successful. Does not want you to do the things that God has called you to do. If you think about Peter, he was a disciple of Jesus Christ. And if you think about it, that Satan has asked him to sift him as wheat. What does it mean to sift you as wheat? What does it mean to sift me as wheat? Because the whole purpose of Satan is to condemn you, to destroy you, to give you guilt, to add more worry, to give you hopelessness, to give, bring shame on you. But think about Peter. This guy was walking with God from day 1. From day 
and he knew who God was and he knew what God can do. This was a disciple of Jesus Christ, Peter. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you. Today, if you're not careful, today, if you're not in tune with the Spirit of God, today, if you're not walking in the ways of God, Satan will come like a thief in the night. He will try and take you out. If you think about Cain and Abel, if you're in the Old Testament, it says sin is crouching at your doorstep. Many of us are walking in the ways of sin. We, are, we do not know that we are walking in the way of sin. And enemy will try and distract you, put you in the wrong direction. But think about your enemy and you think about what God can do. The enemy may come in a form of a thought. And that thought will lead you to believe that you are not good enough. That thought will lead you to believe that you have done too much bad. That thought will lead you to believe that you are not good enough for God. That thought will lead you to believe that you have done so many things. Your history is done. You have done so many mistakes. The unpardonable sin. The enemy's purpose is to detour you to your destruction. Your enemy comes and is looking for you to make for you to make a mistake. And when you do make a mistake, are you going to be living the rest of your life by the mistake that you have done? Are you going to allow the grace of God, the mercy of God to lead you to a place of hope? So many of us are going through so much stress. So many of us are going through so many challenges, a darkness where the darkness seems so dark. We do not know how to turn back. But in the middle of the enemy, what does Jesus say to Peter? But I have prayed for you. Who is praying for you today? Is your wife, is your family praying for you? Is your pastor praying for you? Is your leader praying for you? But the most important prayer is the prayer of Jesus. What an incredible God that we serve. This God has prayed for Peter and he even tells him, Peter, you are going to deny me. You are going to walk away from God. You are going to do your own thing for a while. But I know who you are. That's a word for somebody right there. I know who you are. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are my precious son. You are my precious daughter. If Imagine if a normal person knew what they were going to do. Would they take them back? Peter was going to deny Jesus that he even knew who Jesus was. Maybe you had people walk away on your life. Maybe people betray you. But your enemy may come in the form of unforgiveness. Your enemy may come form in, in the form of guilt. Your enemy may come, come form in a form of unforgiveness in the things of this world. Bitterness, envy, hopelessness, depression. The challenges that you are going through right now might be so big and you are wondering how you are going to make it. But remember, God is stronger than the enemy. And God is saying to you, I have prayed for you. Why did Jesus pray for Peter? Did he pray that he may not lose things? Did he pray that he will not go through difficulty? Did he pray that he would not experience setback? Did he pray that he would not experience disappointment? That did he pray that he would not go through hurt? Why did Jesus pray? Jesus prayed for one, one thing and one thing alone. He prayed for Peter's faith. Why did Jesus pray for Peter's faith? No matter what you lose in life, your faith will allow you to come back. No matter what you go through in life, your faith will allow you to come back. No matter what, you may have lost your job, you may have lost your health, you may have lost your finances, you may have lost the things that are very, very important to you. But one thing that Jesus is praying for you today is for your faith. Your faith. Do not lose your faith in God. 
Faith as a mustard seed can do incredible things in your life. Faith in who God is and what God can do in and through your life. Where is your faith in the middle of your enemy attacking you? Where is your faith in the middle of your hurt? Where is your faith in the middle of hopelessness? You may have lost your house. You may have lost your loved one. You may have lost your job. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Is your enemy stronger than your faith? Or are you allowing Jesus to pray for you? Can you believe God again? Can you? Can you believe God again? Imagine with me that God is not done with you. God is for you. Just like Peter. Imagine the relationship that Jesus had with Peter to say, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you. Satan has asked for you. Today, the enemy is after your life. But God's plans are greater than the enemy's. God's plans for your life are greater than the enemy. Simon, Simon, the enemy has asked for you. Satan is wandering you. Today you might be a pastor. Today you might be a prophet. Today you might be a leader. Today the enemy is after your life. But God has prayed for you. Amen. God has prayed for you that your faith will not fail you. Your faith will not fail you, my son, my daughter. Number two, your preparation. Your preparation. Imagine leading up to this point in life. Peter was equipped. Peter was empowered of the miracles of God, the anointing of God, the signs and wonders of following Jesus. But Peter saw with his eyes. Peter heard with his ears. Yet, he denied the one that could save his life. Yet, he denied the one that holds his life in the palm of his hands. This very Peter was being prepared, even though he was spending a lot of time with God. Many times we say to God, we are ready. I'm ready to be a pastor. I'm ready to lead. I'm ready to be married. I'm ready to take up this promotion. I'm ready to take on new responsibilities. Are you ready? Are you ready? Sometimes God is preparing you for the opportunity of your lifetime. We're waiting for that opportunity, but in the middle of our journey, God is knows. God knows what He's up to, my son. God knows what He's up to, my daughter. He does not make mistakes. He is preparing you. If you think about David, he was in the wilderness. He was minding his own business, looking after the sheep. You think about Moses. He was in the wilderness for 40 years after he killed the Egyptian. He was running for his life. You think about Paul who was torturing Christians. He was killing Christians. But God was preparing him while he was killing Christians. God was preparing Moses while he was in the wilderness. God was preparing David while he was in the wilderness. Will you allow God to prepare you? Will you allow God to prepare you in the middle of your drought? Will you allow God to prepare you in your disappointment? Will you allow God to lead you and guide you in the middle of your darkness? Because preparation is not fancy. Nobody wants to be prepared. We all want the glory. We all want to be in the center of attention. But God knows what he is doing the bible says he is the potter i am the clay and you are the clay the potter knows what he's doing with the clay as he molds and he shapes you many times god is shaping our character god is shaping our thoughts god is shaping our the way we think in the middle of your shape, shaping, in the middle of your preparation, can you trust God? You know, Peter, imagine Peter 
this guy was walking with God. This guy was fellowshipping with Jesus, the living Jesus with flesh and blood. Today, we do not see Jesus, but he is spirit. He has given us his word. Today, will you allow the place that you are in right now to prepare you? The place that you are in right now is, is essentially changing you. There is a word for somebody right now. You want to go to a new place, but God is saying to you, the place that you are in right now is preparing you. It's preparing your beliefs. It's preparing your heart, softening your heart, molding you, shaping you in the things of God. Because when you are not prepared, when the opportunity comes and you take it, it will crush you. When you're not prepared to take on new responsibilities, it will crush you of the pressure. But God is preparing you. Imagine if God said, I'm not going to use you anymore because of your past. I'm not going to use you because you denied me. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we all have denied Jesus Christ. We all have fallen away, but God's mercy, God's grace comes stooping down in the middle of our crisis, comes stooping down in the middle of our failure, comes stooping down in the middle of our disappointment to say, my son, my daughter, I am not done with you. Will you allow God to prepare you? Will you allow God to mold you? Even Jesus had to be molded. Even Jesus had to be shaped. The Father was training him up. In the middle of your training, will you keep your eyes on Jesus? Or are you going to have a, a bad attitude? What are you going through right now in the middle of your challenges, in the middle of your setback, in the middle of your disappointment? Will you allow God to prepare you? When you are prepared, you can understand people. When you're prepared, you can relate to people. When you're prepared, when you've gone through hell and high water, you can relate. You can lead people. You can show them and walk alongside of them. Because Jesus knew Peter was going to do it. But his ending did not end in denial. But his ending ended in his destiny. Come on somebody, that is the grace of God. That is the incredible grace of God. The mercy of God that chose to use Peter. The last and final point. Your turn to God. Your turn to God. What did Jesus say? If you read to Luke again, it says, For I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail when you have returned to me. When you have returned to me. You know, in life you will go through so many challenges. In life, you will experience difficulties. In life, you will experience setback. In life, you will be down some days. But in the middle of your failure, who are you going to turn to? In the middle of your mistakes, who are you going to turn to? Are you going to say, God is done with me? Or are you going to say, God still can use me? Imagine Peter's life. What God would have felt, what God would have felt in his heart. He walked with them, he worked with them, he showed them, he had fellowship with them, he ate with them, yet he denied them. But he says, when you choose to return to the source. Many of us have fallen away from our first love. Your first love is, should be God. Your first love should be about Jesus. When all things fail, who are you going to trust? When all things fail, 
who you are who you're going to turn to when you are faced with a hopeless situation who are you going to turn to you may be going through a health challenge that seems like out of hope now there's no hope for your life anymore you might be going through a job loss you might be going through a challenge in your relationship who are you going to turn to this is a very very important key my son my daughter who are you going going to turn to is it jesus or is it things of this world is it alcohol are you going to turn to comfortable things are you going to turn to things that are comfort that are going to be temporary comfort to you because of your mistakes because of your guilt because of your past you don't you think god will not want to do anything to do with you anymore but god is saying to you and i turn to me turn to me regardless of your past regardless of your mistakes regardless of where you are if you turn to me i will do an incredible thing that i hold your future your future is not determined by your past failures imagine if jesus determined peter's future by his denial there will be no more peter there'll be no more peter imagine if jesus said your future is cut off now because you have de- you have denied me openly you have denied me that you knowing me but the incredible grace the incredible mercy of god even in the midst of your denial god has for future but the key is you have to turn to him you have to surrender your life to him you have to say god i know i have done mistakes I know I have made poor choices but you are my only hope you are my only source of life you are the giver of life can you turn to god if you read x44 what happens when god chooses to use peter 5000 people were saved 5000 people were saved when peter preached 5000 can you imagine this guy denied the very knowing of who god was the very knowing of what god can do this guy is denied god but you are not denied by your past you are not denied by your choices you are not denied by your failures this peter god used him and today god is saying your future is so amazing your future is so amazing what an incredible god that we serve i'm excited for you for those who are struggling for those who are disappointed for those who have given up on life keep on firing the good fire of faith because god is not done with you god is not done with you if god can use peter he can use you if god can use peter he can use you and i regardless of our past today god is saying in the middle of your depression in the middle of your darkness will you turn to me in the middle of your worry will you turn to me in the middle of your hurt will you turn to me in the middle of your hopelessness will you turn to me In the middle of your detours will you turn to me? In the middle of whatever you are going through will you turn to me? Because God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you to show you his unconditional love, to show his grace. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises rises up again today is your moment today is your grace turn to jesus surrender your life to god because god has an incredible future the prayer of jesus has been prayed over you that your faith will not fail you your faith will not fail you today i want to remind you the plans of god are greater than your enemies 
because your enemy wants you down but God's grace and mercy will come running towards you to lift you up to strengthen you to protect your God-given destiny and purpose in the middle of your preparation do not give up on God because God has not given up on you God is continuing to pray for you to encourage you and God believes the best for you and your destiny is still there as you turn to God turn to God and who hang on to God no matter what you are going through this is the prayer of Jesus if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior this is a moment for you that you give your life to Christ thank you for connecting to us in this ministry if you have been blessed by this word share it with your friends and your family may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you give you peace give you joy give you strength that Jesus has prayed for you that your faith will not fail you have an amazing blessed week ahead amen